Let's give our thanks to God for the privilege we have of being able to make an offering. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in gratitude for all the good things that you have done for us and our minds are particularly concentrated at this Easter time. But we thank you for the daily provision so that we can live comfortably each day. And a sense of your generosity which is heightened at this Easter time. So we pray to Heavenly Father that like you, you will help us to think of others first. We thank you that we have the ability to give, that you've looked after us in such a way that we can find within our resources opportunities to give. So we pray that you will receive the gifts that we have given, that they shall become part of the kingdom here in the Fassifern, that you will bless those who have the opportunity to, to administer them and may people be brought into your kingdom because of our generosity. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Bible verse this morning is from Matthew 21 verses 1 to 11. The triumphant entry. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone see, says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. May God bless this reading. Are we able to get a video by any chance? Is that? Are we able to get a video in by any chance? Is that? Jesus, you have saved me! Welcome to our city! Hey, Jesus! Jesus! Who is that He raised Lazarus from the dead! Who is this Jesus of Nazareth? He's a prophet. A great prophet. A prophet? On a donkey? <laughs>
we go. So I don't know about you, um, but I see some, some very contrasting imagery there, isn't there? Um, I'm not sure if you picked up on it, but we, we saw those that were obviously over, moon, over the moon, overjoyed at Jesus' arrival, that were so very excited and, and, and um, you know, praising him for, for coming into Jerusalem there. Um, and then, you know, there was the others, so the soldiers and, and some others that were sort of hanging back and taking note just observing what was going on and sort of wondering a lot if they should be worried about what this means for them and and what this actually um, entails. And so, yeah, some some contrasting views there for Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem. And so, as we've talked about, we're at this time of the year where we acknowledge Palm Sunday, which means Easter is right on our doorstep. Um, This year, again, is is flying by so very quickly. Um, And so... Does anyone feel that this year's racing by? Does it feel like it hasn't slowed down at all? Yeah. The century's, moving on pretty well. the century's going pretty quick. That's right. <laughs> it definitely is. And so, um, so I want us to uh, still keep our focus here on, on not just Easter yet, but our focus here on today on this Palm Sunday and, and this exciting portion of Scripture um, that we have here in which we look at that fanfare and praise that surrounded Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And so, a few key observations again, right off the bat, when I looked through this passage, um, the, um, well, no, I didn't look at it this morning, but when I first looked at this passage to, to go through, and firstly, the fact that, that Jesus wasn't someone often who, who was to seek a high status. He wasn't someone who tried to be, his aim wasn't to be the centre of everyone's attention. Um, it happened quite often, yes, we know that. Um, but we see with Jesus, he didn't do the things he did to get noticed. He did them and he was noticed. He didn't do them to get noticed. He did these things because he was the son of God and he was then noticed. But the next key thing that stood out in this journey that Jesus took into Jerusalem is that he knew exactly what was going to take place for him there. He knew exactly what he was going into. And, and this is what just sort of astounded me reading this and and it really hit at home for me seeing that Jesus took this journey knowing exactly what was in store in Jerusalem for him he went anyway and then also along with that that he knew that the religious leaders there were not going to be impressed with his arrival they were fearful as I mentioned of what this presence of Jesus meant for them but again he made this grand entrance anyway and so among many things, I sort of this, I sort of saw this as a bit of a, you know, in your face to these these leaders. You know, they they said, you know, Jesus, if you come here, if you if you come into Jerusalem, you will be arrested, you will be attacked, we'll be angry, you will be crucified. And and Jesus said, well, I'm coming anyway. He said, I'm coming anyway. I've got a job to do. And so this morning we're going to look at just that, and that the humility that Jesus showed in his arrival into Jerusalem. The idea that he knew what would take place, but he came to put us first and himself last. He came to put us first and himself last, the humble king. So humility is such a broad and extensive concept, I feel. There's many ways that you can look at humility. Um, You know, there's some people who do things and, and... will only do them to receive recognition. Probably the opposite of of humility, really. Um, Some people that choose to receive that recognition, people that don't want to receive any recognition, there's people that just do things and make sure that it's anonymous because they don't want it known. They just want to help. They just want to support. They just want to do things to see others lifted up. And so I don't know where you you sit with with those those things. You may be someone who appreciates a bit of... um, Praise from time to time, I know, I know I do, it's not a bad thing to, to you know, receive a bit of good feedback. Um, and so, you know, there, there's different ways you can look at this idea of, of humility, different levels, I feel. Um, and so, perhaps it's a never-changing thing for you as well. Maybe you do something and you don't want to receive any recognition, you want to do this particular thing to stay quiet. Or you want to do something and, and let people know about it. It is nice, as I mentioned, to receive recognition at times. Because um, it does feel good. It's reassuring to receive that recognition. But when it comes to Jesus, though, 
He was so sure of fulfilling his father's purpose. He didn't need that reassurance. He was certain of what he was doing. He knew what his role was. And he knew just how to fulfill it. He was able to do all of this while at the same time still being authentic to the people around him. And his authenticity, I feel, was evident by the reception that he received. Even though he chose to ride on a lowly donkey to be heard, people still knew who he was. This simple act of humility would serve so many great purposes. Most importantly, though, when all that is going to take place after this moment does take place, people are able to look back on these moments with greater significance, knowing who Jesus was and the way he acted. They will have these memories in which they can look back on and remember and integrate with them the events that took place in the preceding weeks and years that culminated in what then happened for them in their life. But also in doing this, Jesus fulfills a, prof- uh, a prophecy that had been foretold. The quote of scripture here in Matthew 25 is from the prophet Zechariah in chapter 9, verse 9, which reads, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion, shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And now interestingly of note, is the fact that a donkey was the animal of a choice that was ridden by rulers when they wanted to show peace. They wanted to show peace, they rode a donkey. They were going into battle, they rode a nice big horse. But they want to show peace, and they rode a little donkey. And so in that, we can see that Jesus is also enforcing this peace-loving approach that he came to provide and to teach us. As it was also something of a royal custom... Jesus was able to maintain dignity as the Prince of Peace, as well as exhibiting humility at the same time. Now, can you just imagine having such great responsibility on your shoulders, being so highly sought after for whatever reasons people had, and then being able to perfectly execute this idea of being both a human man among other people and also being the Son of God? Couldn't imagine that pressure. (laughs) But Jesus knew it. He knew his assignment and he handled it perfectly. And as he did so often, Jesus gave us this example of how we ought to live our lives. He showed us that we need to be authentic. Authentic in our Christian walk. And to do so with humility. Paul preaches on this over in Philippians chapter 2. The the passage there is titled, Imitating Christ's Humility. And in verses 5 to 8, we read, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by being obedient to death, even death on a cross. That line there in that passage, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. Now, all of this is is not something I could ever imagine, you know, taking place before me, but these circumstances that Jesus faced here. Um, but I know for me, if, if, if I was to be doing something of such importance that Jesus was doing, we talked about this, you know, when do you feel that you want to show humility? When do you like receiving recognition? I kind of think if I was going to be doing something of this extravagance, of this danger, of, of this magnitude, I'd probably want to be telling people about it and, and you know, say, well, I'm going to go do something here that's real dangerous. You know, but he humbled himself. He humbled himself and he was obedient to that death on the cross. And so for many of the people who followed or watched on and either supported or despised Jesus, he was seen as a king. Whether some of them liked it or not, it was often recognised. But there is a totally different side to Jesus' actions and life on earth that was not really perceived or grasped. And that being... Sorry, and that being... 
that he was also a suffering servant. Some of these people saw him as a king, but he was also a suffering servant. And I wonder for you, if you try to just think about that in your head right now, can you picture Jesus as servant and as a king? And I know we want to respond with the right answer with, well, both, of course. We know that's the right answer. But when we line up these two characteristics with the definitions that we know of them, it kind of makes it hard to see how they gel, doesn't it? If we look at the definitions of a, a king, someone who's royal, authority, a leader, responsibility, someone that's high and exalted. And I'm sure we could think of many more. And then we look at a servant, the lowest of the low, there to help, put others first, do anything for you at the bottom of the pecking order. And again, I'm sure many other descriptions you could put on that. Two very different terms, aren't they? A king and a servant. And so when I describe those two different terms, which of those do we ascribe to Jesus? It kind of makes you think for a moment. And again, if you're thinking, well, both, which is the right answer, because we know that. But it's kind of amazing, I think, looking at those definitions, how someone can so perfectly fit into two very opposing characteristics. How can someone be so much of something over here, while at the same time being something that directly sits far away from it. But Jesus did it. So further proving humility that while he was king, Jesus was also a servant. And while I was, you know, putting this title on this message of a humble king, it could, it could just as rightly be given the name of a righteous servant, because that's what Jesus was and is. And again, it would carry the same meaning with it. It's who Jesus was and who Jesus is. It's who the people celebrated on that first Palm Sunday all those years ago. Although I don't think they woke up that day and said it's Palm Sunday. But we gave it the name a bit later. But it's who those people celebrated on that first Palm Sunday. And so this servant king, Jesus our Saviour, he makes this triumphant entrance into Jerusalem And there's comments made by some that we saw in that video that were a bit confused. We see in in verse 10, um, someone asked a question in our passage, who is this? Who is this? All this fanfare is going on and people are wondering wandering on into town and seeing all the hysteria. But the crowd responds, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. They knew exactly what was happening and who they were welcoming. So much so, in fact, that they were crying out to him, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna being a word used to show both adoration and a cry to save us. They were both pleading with and rejoicing in the fact that they knew that this man had come to save them. They knew this man came to save them. He was seen by many as the astrological prophet or our final prophet that would deliver them into those end times. Which brings me to this final point today. The fact that Jesus showed ultimate obedience through humility and servanthood and put our best interests at heart in doing that. As I mentioned earlier, it's almost impossible to imagine that, um, you know, that the way Jesus knew and had foretold what would take place He knew that entering Jerusalem on this day would ensure that things took a catastrophic turn. Yet he obeyed his father's will and followed through with it anyway. What a sacrifice that is. What an example. Now we're grateful that he did and that comes next weekend that we will look at that. But we are able to now live a life free from the bondage of sin because of that obedience because Jesus took that journey into Jerusalem knowing what was ahead. And it got me to thinking, but what is God calling me to today? And perhaps that's a question you can think about for yourself too. What is God calling me to today? What act of obedience is God requiring of me? If he calls us to love one another, serve one another, be patient and humble, 
And if he can go to these lengths to put yours and my best interests at heart, then what can I do for those around me and humble myself in obedience to God? What can I do to be Jesus in a world where so many people just want to take, where so many people just want to be selfish and be angry and hate and be this opposite version of a humble servant? Ask yourself this morning, what can I do to change that narrative in the world around me, in the circles that I'm in? <clears throat> Jesus' arrival as our saviour means so many great life-changing things. Life-changing. But it also serves as an example for us that no matter who we are, no matter the situations that are around us that we find ourselves in, we are never too important to help one another. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for us. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for us. Now, the band to get set to prepare. They're going to help us with a reflection this morning. And as I sat down and was reading back through this message, the words to the servant king came running through my mind. That I thought fit just perfectly with this passage and just what we're looking at this morning. From heaven you came, helpless babe, entered our world, your glory veiled. Not to be served, but to serve and give your life that we might live. And then, so let us learn how to serve and in our lives enthrone him, each other's needs to prefer for it's Christ that we're serving. So as we spend time this morning reflecting on this passage and what God has been speaking to us, think about these things. That Jesus was authentic in all he did. This was evident by the reception that he received upon his arrival into Jerusalem. And he was humble enough to choose the less desirable method of riding on a donkey, showing that he came to bring about peace. Remember that Jesus was and is a king, the king of kings, and Lord of Lords, yet he also came that we might be served and that we might live. That's amazing, isn't it? Finally, if you take anything away from this morning, please go knowing that Jesus' obedience and following his Father's will was all because he had you and your salvation in mind. You and your salvation. And he had your best interests at heart and he chose to continue on that journey for you. Let's worship in reflection this morning. From heaven you came, help us be.
Uh, we're in awe of your glory and your holiness and, and just the sacrifice that you went and made for us. Lord, we thank you for that obedience that you showed so that we might live. We thank you for your example here on this earth. You came as a king, but you lived life as a servant, serving others, putting others first, giving to others what they need for their life. And we thank you that you made these sacrifices, Lord. Help us to apply this to our life, to know that you are the example that we should follow. And Lord, as we approach this Easter season, we, uh, we just pray that you help us to be mindful of exactly what took place for you, of what you did because of us, because of our sin, and that you did it so that we might not suffer, so that we can live in eternity with you. And we thank you, Lord, for this amazing, incredible promise that we have in our life. We pray this, Father, in your precious name. Amen. Would you like to stand together and sing the fourth verse of this song with us? So let us learn how to serve And in our lives enthrone Him Each other's needs to prefer for in his Christ we're serving. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. Amen. Please take your seat. Okay, announcements for this week. So, from last week, we had our self denial um, altar service. Um, it's just an update on where we're at with that. So, the kids, um, they had $180 <laughs> from all of them. Mm. And the main church is currently sitting at around $10,000. Um, now, if you were away last <coughs> week, there is still time mm -hmm. to put in your envelopes, which are still at the back mm -hmm. of the hall. Um, this coming weekend for Easter services, so... Maundy Thursday, we're having a, um, a meal at 6 o'clock and then we're going to come into here and have a 10 and brace service. Um, Good Friday is here at 9 and then Easter Sunday at 9 as well. Um, and I think, and it's just the one with the um, youth camp or youth councils. Um, registrations are still open. They've now gone up $10, but if you want to come... Um, just let me know. Thanks, Kathy. All right. Our final song this morning. Nice, upbeat, exciting song to go out with. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. So let's stand to our feet this morning and sing this wonderful song together.
this morning it's in Psalm 37. It says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. God bless you each uh, this week. Let's enjoy some time of fellowship this morning. <laughs>